viewers, all of our visitors, all of our regular members, we're happy that you're here today. We are having a visitor's potluck following this service. So if you're hungry, stick around. We would love to have all of our visitors stay for that if you would like to. Uh, Kids in Tune will hold registration on August 24, 2.30 p.m. in the youth room. And lastly, if you have lost a set of car keys with a remote, please check with our church office. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome. We're glad you're here today.
Okay, kids, it's your turn. I have some gear to tell you about, so grab the dollar bills that are hanging out and come on up. Who here has the biggest feet? Does anybody know what these are? What are they? You're right, they're skis, and I love to ski. It's probably the sport that is my favorite. I love so skiing so much that after I finished college, I didn't get a real job. I went and taught, taught kids how to ski for a whole winter. So skied 119 days that winter, so I really like to ski. And I like to ski things that are deep in snow and are steep. Really steep is my favorite. So really steep, if it gets really steep, you don't always go really fast because that can be a little scary, but really steep in lots of snow is my favorite. And there is a ski run called Lone Tree. And it's one of my favorite ski runs. I love to ski it, and I also love to watch it. So if you look up at the screen, you can look up there or you can look up here. The one on the right is a view from the bottom, looking back up, and you can see the rocks. It's hard to tell how steep it is, but look over to the left. That's my dog. He has skied it too, but without skis. And then you look way in the middle. There's a building there. And in that building, it's actually a really big building. It doesn't look very big, but that's one of the places we'd eat lunch. So when it's time to eat lunch, you take off your skis. So you pop them off, twist your boots out. You leave your skis outside. They're kind of big to take inside. So I'd go inside. I'd find a place to sit. They make good pizza there and also really good French fries. You can get cheese on the French fries. It's really good. And so I like to sit there and watch. And I look up and I watch Lone Tree and I see if anybody's coming down. And there was one day we were watching and we saw a skier come up to the top. And it comes up to the top and you get to the top of this ski run and you have to hike a little bit to get there. And you stand at the top and you look down and you go, oh, that's a little steeper than it looks from the bottom. Actually, it's a lot steeper than it looks from the bottom. And you can see in the picture, there's rocks on the left side. There are rocks on the right side. There are rocks in the middle. There's not a lot of room, so it's a little bit scary. That's part of what makes it fun. And this skier, you saw him go, and he makes one turn, and then he makes another turn, and then he falls. And one of his skis comes off. And it's so steep that he slid about 300 feet down the mountain. Well, you see him get up, and you see him look up the mountain, and the ski's way up there at the top, and he tries to climb back up, but it's too steep. He climbs a little ways, and he slides back down. He takes his other ski off. He tries to climb up, he slides back down, and you can see that he gives up, and he's too steep. him make sure he was okay and I see him kind of walking out of the woods one ski on kind of pushing along and I go up to him and say are you okay and he turns to look at me and I look at his face and on his face he's got scratches 
he's got a scrape and kind of a bruise. I'm like, are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. That was yesterday. And you're thinking, wow, he did that after that happened yesterday. And I thought about that later, and that meant a lot to me, actually, because we all have times that we fall down, we get scrapes, we get bruises, we do things wrong, we get in trouble. And you know what? God forgives us, He picks us back up, and sends us out again. And sometimes we fall again, and God still takes care of us. He's always got grace for us. He's always ready to forgive us. He still wants us to be His. So I want you to think about that if something goes wrong, if you fall down, if you get hurt, that God always wants you and is always there ready to be your friend. Thank you. When I was 14 or 15, I don't remember exactly which one it was, I don't want to lead you astray. Um, when I was 14 or 15, I went home for the summer to visit my dad in Guatemala. He, we live in a very small rural village on the border of Mexico, 5,000 feet elevation, 1,500 people in the entire village, coffee plantations, a very idyllic and calm life. And I went home for two weeks during my summer break and we went to church that Sabbath. Very small church. It's literally a sanctuary with two aisles of pews and then a platform. The bathrooms are outside. There's a little courtyard with trees and flowers, but the only thing in the church is the actual sanctuary. We, we walked to church, living in a village, everything's small. Um, and it happened to be communion Sabbath. So we had the service inside, and then because the sanctuary is so small, Everyone walked outside to sit in the courtyard to wash each other's feet. And so I walked out and I noticed that my uncle was washing my cousin's feet, my aunt and her daughter, they were washing their feet. Oh, there's brother so-and-so, there's my other cousin, people that I knew. And I looked over and I saw my dad washing this gentleman's feet and I didn't recognize him. He was wearing a threadbare short sleeve button-up shirt. He was wearing slacks that were patched, and he was wearing rubber boots, galoshes that come, you know, halfway up your calf. And in Guatemala, if you can't really afford a pair of tennis shoes or leather work boots, that's what you can buy, because you can get them for $2, and they'll last you as long as you need them to. And I looked over, and my dad was taking his boots off, and this gentleman wasn't wearing any socks. He had very dirty feet. My dad didn't bat an eye, washed his feet, and they prayed, and we went back inside and finished Sabbath, and afterwards we had a, a meal. And that afternoon I asked my dad, I said, who was that gentleman that you were washing his feet? I didn't recognize him. He says, oh, he lives up on the mountain. We live in the mountains, but there's mountains higher in smaller, more remote villages behind where we live. He says, oh, he lives up on the mountain about two hours away, and he comes down whenever we have communion or whenever we're going to have a communion. I started thinking about the services that our small church provided there, and in a much larger scale, that is what we have the opportunity of providing here at Madison campus, is we have the opportunity of providing those in our community that need fellowship, those in our community that need their feet washed, whether it's physically or metaphorically. I'm going to ask the deacons to please come forward. Our loose offering for today is for our church budget. Our church budget keeps the lights on. It also funds all our ministries that make it possible for us to reach out to our community, that make it possible for us to provide a safe place for those that want to come and enjoy a meal, and more importantly, those that want to come and know and meet Jesus. Let's pray. Most infinite Father God, thank you for giving us the many blessings that you have, and for giving us the opportunity to return that to you through our tithes and our offerings. Thank you for giving us the opportunity at Madison campus to reach out to our community, to be a shining light, 
to reflect your love to everyone we encounter. I ask that you continue to bless us so that we can continue to bless others. We love you. Please come soon. And I can just tell you, like, it was like, when is it going to be warm again? I grew up in the South. I need some warmth already. And have you ever been there? Have you been in a, in a winter that just felt like it kept on going? And you just were wondering, spring has, to, spring has to roll around at some point, doesn't it? Or maybe a better metaphor for those of you who live in the South would be pregnancy. Have you ever had a, a pregnancy where you couldn't wait for that baby to show up and you just kept wondering when it was going to happen, and then it happened. You know, sometimes in, in, the, in the moments of life, we don't know when that season's going to change. And it's hard. Because God's in control of the season, and you're like, God, change the season already. I'm ready to be warm. But it doesn't change. But what the Bible tells us in Galatians 6, 9 is that in due season, that means at the right time. And God knows what the right time is. At the right time, that season will change. And I tend to think there's a lot less that we can do to speed it up or slow it down than we give ourselves credit for. Have you ever said that to God? Just tell me what I'm supposed to learn so I can learn it so we can move on. And God smiles and says, I'm teaching you patience. We're going to wait a while. <laughs> Let us not become exhausted in spirit.